and welcome to another video blog post from cmsquickstart.com. Today, we're going to install Drupal on a Rackspace.com hosted account. Rackspace, uh, you've heard of them. Uh, they actually send people out to uh, a lot of the Drupal events. Uh, I've run into them frequently. So we're going to use uh, a hosted account by them and show you how to use their panel to install Drupal. We'll do uh, Drupal 7 today. And who are we? We are cmsquickstart.com. Check us out. We have highly functional installation profiles. They may appear to be just uh, schnazzy looking themes, but they're actually pre-configured content types, pre-configured blocks and views, and lots of really cool stuff, slideshows, etc. It's a rapid deployment method of getting your site built quickly. That's cmsquickstart.com. Who am I? I am Doug Van. Check me out at dougvan.com. You can contact me right there with the contact me button. But today we're going to talk about rackspace.com. Now, if you have a Rackspace account, you have a panel similar to this. This is your front page panel. And we're going to be using that. I'm also going to be using FileZilla, right there she is, File Transfer Protocol, FTP, to get the, my sites up and around here. Let's do it. And the first thing you want to do is go to Drupal.org and get a fresh copy of Drupal. Now only five and six are available here, so the way I know to get to a hold of the newest one is to go to the project page. Project slash Drupal. And on this page we have Drupal 7 Alpha 3, right there. So I'm going to download this. I'm going to place this in a folder I created earlier. Now I'm using my Sites folder on my Mac, and I created a folder called Rackspace. That's where I'll keep all my files. I'm going to save that. You might choose something. If you're a PC, you might choose something like in the My Documents section. And your options are TAR and GZ. Uh, let's go with TAR. Now it's sitting in my directory, and I need to unpack it. Here it is. Here's my Sites folder, my Rackspace folder, and in here is that .tar. Think of that as like a zip, a dot zip, a zipped up package. Now double click it on the Mac and you're done. It opens it up and reveals the folder inside which is Drupal 7 Alpha 3.2. Uh, PC, there's some links on our blog post. Uh, in fact, if, if you're seeing this video disembodied from its blog post, cmsquickstart.com slash blog is where you find the text version of this uh, tutorial. So um, PC users, find a link there. You'll find the, uh, the files you need. So let's go over here to our FileZilla. Now i, I got to refresh this because I've added the folder and the file there. So here we are. If you look inside this folder, these are all the files we need and folders we need for a Drupal installation. Over here is the remote side. This is our server from Rackspace. If you double click the name of your site, which in this case is CMS Blogs, and then go to Web, and then go to Content, okay, the index.html, that tells you that uh, you're in the right place because index.html sits at the very web root of uh, your account. And what does our site look like right now? If you go over here, this is what a new site looks like, cmsblogs.com. This is what a new site looks like when you have a new account from Rackspace. Now back over here on the FTP, I need to move all these files over to my remote. Starting with the very one on the top, the actual folder there, I'm going to shift arrow down all the way to the bottom and drag it over to my web host. That's going to take a while, so I'm going to come back in just a second. And it's done. Now if you recall the settings.php uh, trick you have to do in Drupal 6 and 5, it happens here too. Let's take a look at the Sites folder. And remember, the right side is the remote and the left side is the local. Sites, and then open up Default. And here's Settings.php. Uh, Drupal 7 requires that you leave the default.settings.php and also have a Settings.php. Now to do that, here's my trick for that. I go over here to my local side, open up Sites and Default. I rename this one, Settings.php, and then drag it over to transfer it over. So I have now, so now I have two copies. I have one named default.settings.php and one named settings.php. Now you may also recall that the settings.php file must be writable by Drupal. To do that, right click it or control click it, go to file permissions, and here you have the permissions. Add the write permission to the group permissions. We're adding write to group. Okay, now that's done. Let's go back to our control panel that Rackspace gives us, which is over here. That'll be under your Features tab, and the very top option is Databases. We're going to add a database. Notice that it's prepended with a 485708 underscore. We'll have to know that later. Let's call ours CMSQS for CMS Quick Start. And the database type will be MySQL, as is the most common. Now we also need to create a database username for this. I suggest you find a better name, but we're going to use User for now. Password, just a bunch of stars. So I'm going to continue this. I'm going to hit the Finish button. And now that we have saved the username and the database name, we have a link here which we need to follow. And we want, we want to memorize 485708 because we're going to use it later. So 
So clicking on the name of the database gives us this very useful information, the host name. This database is not served on the same machine as the file structure for Drupal will be saved. So we're going to use this host name right here, and I'll show you where. Over here, we are now ready to install Drupal. Our options are standard and minimal. We're going to go standard. English is built in, so we're going to stick with that. You could use other languages. That's pretty cool. Now our options are MySQL, Postgres, and SQLite. Obviously, we're using MySQL. Now the database name was over here, right there. Copy it, come back, and paste it. And the username was very similar, but it had the word user on the end. And the database password was, oddly enough, a bunch of stars. Now here are the advanced options, and we're going to see localhost is not what we want. The database host we're going to use is right here. I know I had you copying quite a few times there, but uh, we're doing it right this time. The host name, right there. And now we have a, a very long screen ahead of us. We're going to install 28 modules. Actually, this is cooking so fast, I'll just talk right through it. What it's doing right now is installing uh, all 28 modules that come uh, prepackaged with this, uh, that come prepackaged with Drupal 7. And that was fast. The Rackspace server is very fast. Here we go. So you're very familiar with this screen. This is very similar to what we've done in the past with other sites. The site name, we can leave the same there. Uh, Use my address, sysop at dougvan.com. Feel free to email me if you want to, S-Y-S-O-P. And uh, going on further, uh, email address for the website itself, password, a uh, bunch of stars. That's all we ever do. And uh, here we come into some other settings here. Default country, United States, listed alphabetically there towards the bottom. United States. And check this out. You can get email notifications from your install of Drupal when uh, core or contributed modules need updated. That's pretty cool. So we're going to save and continue that. We have one more click to do. Visit your new site. Now, you're not going to see that big, ugly welcome screen you're accustomed to in previous versions of Drupal. There it is. That's what you get. So that's installing Drupal on a Rackspace.com hosted account. And here's Rackspace. Good people. A lot of people use them. You can get VPSs and whatnot there, but this, this was a shared host version we did. I am Doug from DougVan.com. Check me out. And CMSQuickStart.com. Check out the installation profiles we have. Uh, very high functional, very, very turnkey. We think you'll like them. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.